enjoying life? Always. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, uh, Chris has got the obsession with milk chocolate Reese's cups. Every time it comes back from lunch, he's always like, man, I almost got you one, but you know, it's too fresh to, too fresh to waste. How is it? It's, it's uh, wrapped and sitting in a factory he, floor. He says, man, I can tell you how fresh they are by the crinkle, wrinkle of the wrapper. <laughs> Hey. What? Apparently you're some sort of Reese's Cup aficionado. Uh, over here thinking he could judge the quote unquote freshness. Bro, I don't even want to get into it, man. It's too much to talk about. Hey, come here. Come here, please, sir. <laughs> so, hey, hey, let me see him. About to eat so, he already knows it's coming. Get out of here. Let me see that. I can't do the wrinkle. Let me see. You're you said in the package up. You said yesterday. Okay. It sound fresh. Let me see. It sound fresh. <laughs> I know it's fresh. Yeah? Yeah. I Did you it. make it? Did you right. make it? No. Right. You went back there in the back and, no. you know, whipped up. I'm not entertaining y'all's bullshit, man. <laughs> Open that up and eat it. Guaranteed it's fresh. What if it feels stale? Try me. <laughs> This week's mission is to design and build a catch can for the back of the CTSV. In the last event, we were using kind of a ghetto setup where we, uh, just, <laughs> we just used basically a pail with a smaller pail on the inside, a bunch of holes poked in it, just to alleviate pressure from the valve covers and the, uh, the crankcase. Because, I mean, we're pushing a lot of pressure through all that stuff, running meth and running the boost levels and the compression ratios we are. So step one is designing it up in our CAD software, which I like to use Fusion 360 just because I can fold it up in the sheet metal mode to actually see where everything mates up because you lose material when you do a bend. It makes it a little wider than you have the measurements originally and stuff and just it's easier to visualize so I like to use that program to run around and see physically what it's going to look like after I make each of the pieces in the sketch mode. Since we're using the plasma cutter, everything is in just a sketch and we export it as a uh, DXF file over to that computer we got downstairs. My office is upstairs, so this is where I do a majority of the CAD work and or website and all the other nonsense that we do on a daily basis. Next step after design is throwing it down on the plasma cutter. You cut out all the pieces. You got to check and make sure all the measurements are correct. There's always slight deviations, like fractions of fractions of an inch, just to make sure everything mates up because it, it actually really does matter when you're trying to weld together two seams, they don't line up perfectly. And uh, especially when you're bending manually, because we just have, we have a bender, like a brake bender, and then we have a the hydraulic press we have outfitted to bend full 90 degree angles and everything. Keep going. Right there. So after bending a bunch of the pieces up, we have to, you know, dry fit everything together before we tack weld or anything like that. And so far, everything seems like it's made up pretty good. We went with a double U design so they can two bends on each piece and they kind of clamshell over each other and then we just do the welds on the seams to keep down the welds. And it's a box. It's a box. With holes. With holes. Hi right, boys, can I get you on it? All right, see you tomorrow. 
Upon attempting to create the first one, we've noticed some issues with the materials. So, we had to go back to the drawing board. Instead of going with a box quite that big, we're changing over to 10 by 10 by 10 cube with, instead of using the diffusers on the box and on the inlet, we opted to do more of an internal vein style, which we'll, I'll show you in some footage here. So, here is the redesign. How the inner baffles are gonna work. Instead of going with the jut down, like I had previously coming off of this right here, we opted for the entire box to end up being the baffle. So it has to follow this path here, here, before it even gets up to here. So we shortened the baffle basket and we added these veins. We also changed the size of the box to be 10 by 10. Outside, bang. Drain hole, vent outlet, and the two intakes on the front of the car. So this will be mounted in the trunk. Version two. <laughs> it's okay, we're on version 200 of the car, so. True. <laughs> So after redoing all the plasma cutting on version two, we are gonna assemble. <laughs> we used a thicker material this time too. Before I think it was uh, 16th, this is 8th inch aluminum. Just gotta dry fit everything back together again to make sure this one uh, goes together easier than this. <laughs> Bait, boop, bait. <laughs> kind of like that. We'll bend this one down so it'll drain. Come down, drain out the bottom. So we got the vein system all made, and uh, this time, instead of using the U over U for top and bottom pieces, we just did the bottom pieces a double bend, and the same thing with the inner box. We're doing, uh, we cut two of the sides off, so it's just weld two of the sides, bend two of the sides. It just makes it easier. It's impossible to fully bend the box once you get to the second set of tabs to bend. So then all there's left is to uh, weld it all up. And here we go, we got the box. It's not fully welded, it's all tacked together, but it is one solid object. It's gonna be mounted here. Got a two inch pipe. It's gonna go up through here, through the hood, for the vent. And we got this hose, which if we come up here, you can see, it goes all the way up to the bulkhead where we got some AN fittings. 
And then on this side, and fittings come through and it goes to the valve cover vent and it goes to crank vent, crankcase vent. So, on the next video, we'll show it finishing getting welded up and then we're taking this thing to the track this weekend to have some fun and get some testing done. Having fun? Ain't much, but it's honest work. <laughs> it's taken many years to learn that, bro. <laughs> the crinkle on the wrapper! Yeah. How it pulls out of the wrapper. Oh my god. Get out of here, dude. Bro, they all sit in a factory floor. They're all the same. There ain't no freshness factor. It's chocolate. Oh, shit. You've got ones that came out of the factory two weeks ago and made it to a store, and then you've got some that are at the store that have been chilling for two years. There's a difference in the freshness. Now get the fuck out of here, I'm trying to work. <laughs> Damn it, you're pissing me off. <laughs> fuck you, Dan. <laughs> Where's these fresh ass Reese's, dude? I ate four of them right before I got here. Uh, where are they at? Where's the rest? I ate them all. <laughs> too fresh, dude? We gotta go back to the same too store where I got them from. Fresh.